humans are all the same. They have the same problems. They have the same characteristics. at just at a different level. You know, like a $10 to someone yeah. is $100,000 to someone else. You know, that equivalent you know, loss of, you know, expense. When you see that top 1%, man, like it actually it made me feel like, I don't know, when I saw these guys pouring out the champagne, man, I was like, this is a whole new level of wealth. Well, or perceived wealth, right? They could have had fuck all money. Who knows? Like, yeah, you know, a lot of this is about yeah. social, you know, I don't know, not proof, but it's like communicating I have money, you know what I mean? It's all of an ego thing, signaling. It's signaling, yeah. signaling. Yeah. So this, this is the thing, right? Everyone's like, you see people that are wearing a Rolex, they've got a Lamborghini, they've got all this kind of shit. And everyone's like, oh, this person's rich. And I'm like, how are they funding this? Are they funding it with debt mm. or equity? And nine times out of 10, it's funded mm. with debt. They are deeply, deeply mm. in debt. And you never really know like behind this, like, yeah, they're putting on this kind of this front and they're signaling that I'm rich. I've got this, I've got that. My watch says something about me. My car says something about me. But it's like, how are you funding that lifestyle? And it's, it's only the like, you know, the really rich families and people that have done something significant and have a lot of wealth okay i've got all this money now i'm going to spend yeah, it on these things literally and and it's Absolutely usually the crazy, and it's the generational wealth that's the other thing i've seen here as well there's a lot of very young people that have been gifted an absolute bucket load of capital and money because how wealthy their families have been for generations so a lot of these guys just walked into wealth you know i, I know i'm generalizing here but probably most of them have done fuck all really they're just being handed a, a shitload of money which yeah by the way i think is really scary like i for us as everyday sort of Aussies that haven't been born into generational wealth, the idea of like growing something from nothing to something is so fucking exciting and empowering for me, you know, and probably for you too, Bergs. Like a lot of us yeah. are, are in that, especially here at Collective Shift, versus just, hey, Bergs, here's 10 million bucks, mate. Off you go. Go and have a great like life. That's, that's a different game. Yeah. So I think about this a lot, especially with um, my kid as well. And, you know, there came a point where I got really comfortable a couple of years ago and I was still studying and I was still doing like, you know, all this stuff. I was still kind of consulting, but I got comfortable because I got to a point where I had enough money to pay my bills. I had money left over. I was paying off the mortgage and there was some left over to invest. And you can get really comfortable and complacent. You lose that hunger and that drive. And that's not a good place to be. You always need that hunger and you always need to achieve something more but then you know money loses its value so i need to chase something else and for me that was building a business building product and having success with collective shift that's the thing i want to go after as well as the lifestyle that affords me and you're spot on i'm very like worried about generational wealth and like i'm not ultra rich or anything like that but my daughter will not live the life that i had with my folks where they basically saved all the time had high interest rates um, managed to keep their house and pay it off. I've built on that. I've got my house. I've got some investments and my daughter will have more than what I have. And back to the rich people, there's this saying where it's like, you know, there's one generation to make the wealth. The next one will grow it and the third generation will blow it. And the reason that is, is because the first family, like when you're coming up, you're working hard, your kids see that. You're always at work. You're building a business. You're working really hard. You're putting deals together. You're hardly home. They see that and they appreciate that and they know what it's like to not have a lot of money. But then their kids, they grow up rich. They have a lot of money. All they've ever known is wealth. They've only been spoilt. They haven't had to strive for anything. And that's when they become complacent, don't understand money and the value behind it. And that's challenging for, for me as well, where even though it's my daughter will probably want for nothing, it's not on that huge scale, but it's more like if you think back to when we were kids and you didn't have all the toys, you didn't have anything, you didn't go on holidays, you didn't go on international trips. She's got all that stuff. And I'm starting to like, you know, worry about that and, I've even seen people on Twitter that have exited companies, have got, you know, hundreds of millions and they've come to the point where it's like you constrict their resources so they have less and they have to do more in order to get the things that they want. It's like this never-ending kind of balance. Um, mate, when my kid's like in, in her teens, I'm going to be like, oh, what's that going to be like? What's money going to be like? You know, how much do I give or what do I make? It's a hell of a thing to think it's about. Man. 